Hi class, it's Bill back with, I believe, the last video in our series here for week seven. We've had videos on various topics, event-driven programming, introduction to swing, using swing basics like J-frames, J-panels, etc. So we've covered a lot of that and talked about a bizarre construct in Java called an anonymous inner class. Uh, very interesting, hopefully to you as, as it is to me. But now, last topic is drawing on a J-panel. The class, if you're in the class with me, you'll be doing a project that requires you to draw on a J-panel, but it's an interesting thing to know about. It's it's pretty straightforward, so let us dive in and look at that. Let's see if I can remember what slide we're jumping to. Bingo! Drawing on a, on a J-panel. First of all, let's just look at the setup code that I've created here for us. You should recognize if you've watched the other videos that this is exactly the code that we were at before where we created a frame, added a J-panel to its content pane, so the J-panel is taking up the entire thing. We are using absolute positioning, we are not using a layout manager, but all of this code should look very familiar if you watch the other videos, so pause if you need to take a second to take it all in and make sure that there's, again, nothing up my sleeve. We're creating all this from scratch. So what we're going to do when we draw on a drawing panel, let's jump back to the slide deck for just a minute. Okay, let us see, where has that gone? Here we go. All right, so uh, what we're going to do is, the first thing we're going to do is that we are going to create our own J panel. Right, so let's jump over and look at that. When we do that, what will we do in our code? I'm going to come down here and I'm going to create my own J panel. You'll see in a minute why I have to do this. Because a normal J panel does its own thing. It knows how to respond to the kinds of events and it knows to, uh, to trigger the system knows to trigger things when particular things happen on the panel and it knows what to do as a result. But our panel has to do something different. Our panel uh, has to respond in a way that causes drawing to happen. So the only way that we're going to get that is that we're going to create our own private uh, class and I'm going to call it a G panel and it's going to be a subclass of JPanel. So it's going to take whatever goodness JPanel has to offer, but it's going to extend it. So that's our starting point, is that we have to create one of those, and then when we are creating our JPanel up here, we are instead going to create a new GPanel. Now, we could certainly leave this reference, right? Because this is a super class reference, so that's perfectly good, right? It's still going to work just fine here. We don't have to make this uh, this uh, static type match the dynamic type here of the, the object. So this is perfectly good. Now, this is fine, and it's going to work, and it's going to compile, but it's not going to do anything. Why? Because this gpanel will automatically, as jpanels do, uh, certain things will cause it uh, to, to know to redraw itself. But the only way that it knows right now to redraw itself is to clear the jpanel. Right? So when it clears the jpanel, that's not going to do the drawing for you. So what we have to do is that we have to provide a very specific override in order to make that happen. So what specifically do we have to override to make this thing happen? Well, the thing that is most important is for us to create an override for a thing called paint component. And paint component is the, the a method that's going to be called when the system believes that the J-panel needs to be redrawn. Now, think about that for a second. Notice I said when the system thinks that the J-panel needs to be redrawn. So your mind should think about, hmm, what does it mean? What are the circumstances in which a J-panel automatically gets redrawn? And if I want to nudge it to draw it, how do I do that? Because again, the weirdest thing about this is you are not in control. You are not in control of when this thing gets redrawn. There's a way to suggest it, right? You can suggest to the J-Panel that it should repaint itself, but generally you don't do that, right? Most of the time you just let it do its thing. The other weird thing is, this is the place where you are going to be passed a graphics reference and that graphics reference is how you draw things. If you haven't done this before, the graphics object is your key, is your toolkit, or your paintbrushes, if you want to think about it, that lets you draw things. It lets you do things like set colors, and draw ovals, and draw rectangles, and filled circles, and all these kinds of fun stuff. So 
the other interesting piece here is that you are given that graphics reference when paint component is called and that is called when the system decides it is good and ready to call it which means in the circumstances where it knows the panel is dirty quote and needs to be with uh, redrawn it will draw it Whew, there's a lot of information in those statements now the other thing we can do <clears throat> just to prove that we are being honest and that that is in fact an override is that we put at override you'll recognize that that doesn't cause the override it's just a note to say if we miss something in the signature got something wrong it would call us out on the mistake so that's great now the other thing that you need to do remember J panels know how to do certain things for themselves they know how to do uh, for instance the one critical thing here is they know the fact that they want to clear before they redraw because you you may have changed the size of something for instance and if so you don't want to have the leftover stuff from the last time still drawn so what you want to do always here is to call paint component and you have to pass it the graphics reference that you were called with because remember polymorphism dynamic dis dispatch guarantees that your paint component is going to be called first right so you have to say hey let the parent do its thing let J panel do its thing with that graphics reference whatever it needs to do it's going to take care of that business then I can take care of my business and my business can be anything as simple as something like this I want to draw a rectangle and I want it to be at position 1010 I want it to be 190 by 190 then I want to set a color all of these are things that are part of a graphics class so look these up if you want to know all the different things that you can draw and I'm going to use color dot blue right now it's going to complain about some imports here in a minute if I haven't imported everything I don't know whether I did uh, I'm going to then fill a circle so I'm going to make it 50 50 by 100 100 right so this is where I write all the code that's supposed to be automatically run when I am asked to run it when I am informed that paint component was automatically called by the system now let me give you a warning here this is passed to you when this is called you are not to mess with this yourself right it is considered bad form bad practice it will get you into trouble if you try to save that in a variable try to reuse it don't do it right there's a Georgia satellite song that says keep your hands to yourself right and so you need to keep your hands to yourself keep your hands off the graphics reference pass it to the super uh, super dot paint component call don't store it don't try to use it any other place just do here what you need to do when you are called to do it hopefully that's enough of a warning to you if you're in the in my class don't do it <laughs> don't try to turn in work where you have misused the graphics object okay so now notice what happens we have a new G panel G panel has an override for the paint component so when the system believes that our panel needs to be redrawn it will do it now we at the moment don't have a great way to test exactly whether what that all means but let's run it and let's see if drawing happens that's the main thing and sure enough it did happen okay so it drew the square it set the blue it drew the circle so everything is happening now it's not going to draw it slow in real time if you want to do that then you have some other work to do to tell the thread to pause and between things whatever but it, it did draw so one thing that I sometimes do because I was curious and you're probably curious what is it that makes this thing triggered what triggers the event because we don't trigger it right it it just decides that it needed to in this case when the thing got created it said hey hey when it when it got created you probably want to draw right so what are the other circumstances under which you might want to draw so let me show you some simple code that I added to kind of give me a sense of that I'm going to import two things down here and then I'm going to oops uh, sorry I'll go back to my code okay uh, and then I did two other things in here this isn't something you'd want to leave in production code but it's kind of fun so I'll put it in here so I create a timestamp to show the current date and time actually the current time and then I'm going to put that 
onto uh, an output console so that you can see when the paint component was called. The idea here is I want to play around with this thing and see, actually pay attention to when the thing is redrawn, just so I'll get a sense of when is this thing called. Okay, so I'm going to now run this thing. I'm going to show you I'll bring it over. This is the initial thing that, that I saw on my other screen. So paint component was called. Now let's see what, m let's think about some ideas of what we think might cause it to be repainted. What if we obscure the window? Hmm, doesn't do anything. All right. What else might do it? How about we minimize and we maximize? Hmm, paint component was indeed called. So it redrew on maximization, or on, on restore. So I minimized and restored. Maximize also would do it. Um, what else do you think might trigger it? Well, how about this? What if I try to resize the window? Wow, every little resize causes a paint component because it doesn't know. Maybe you want to make this stretch, right? Maybe every time you change the size of the window, you want to stretch these these two uh, drawn objects to to match the size of the of the uh, the frame and the the J panel. Well, that would be perfectly reasonable, and if so, that would automatically be done because paint component would be called, and you could use that size. So this is just kind of a fun way to get the sense of when does paint component get called automatically and you can see hey you know in most circumstances it's called when it needs to be called again uh, you might find a rare case where you have to call it because the system doesn't understand uh, that it needed to repaint something changed internally with your data and it couldn't know that so what you want to look into there is that you can ask the jpanel to repaint itself when you ask the jpanel to repaint it's going to trigger a paint component but it's a suggestion right you're saying hey when you get to it the reason i say it's a suggestion is because remember that drawing in the system is a fairly low priority right it's in no hurry to respond and at a breakneck pace but it will be triggered typically when you say hey i'd, I'd like this to be repainted i'm suggesting that i kind of need this to happen and it will respond by calling paint component so again the warnings you don't call paint component. Right? You don't call it. You don't mess with the graphics reference. You don't store the graphics reference. You don't change the graphics reference. You just do what's done here, which is you extend the J panel, write your code, write your paint component override, and everything else is going to work itself out just fine. Okay? So let's see, back to the slide. Anything else? Uh, these, the rest of the warnings, I think, are all here. You can read them on the slide, uh, but hopefully that is a good start for you to understand uh, the basics of how you can draw this way. So uh, read the warnings and heed the warnings, and I appreciate you watching this video. That brings us to the end of our, our event-driven programming and swing uh, discussion. I hope they've been useful to you and hope to see you in another video as we continue on our adventure. We still have some weeks to go in the course, so thanks for watching.